Right, so before I start, um, who uses Azure DevOps at the moment? A few, um, probably 50%. This talk's not just about Azure DevOps, so hopefully you can take something away from that if you're not using Azure DevOps as well. So Azure DevOps is the Microsoft tool to look after source control, work tickets, and it's got a built-in wiki. So when you're doing documentation and wikis, it's nice to put a bit of diagrams in it, just to make it colourful and helps explain, because pictures is a thousand words. So when you're working in Azure DevOps, they've um, not initially, there was initially there's no diagrams, so it was just text. You could put pictures in, but you couldn't actually put a diagram in your source code and reference it using the wiki. So they added the feature, and I'm just going to show you now the capabilities that they, they added. And no Microsoft, they are going to add more features to this, but they use a language called Mermaid. Is anyone familiar with that? It's a, it's a markup language, um, which enables you to produce these diagrams, which you can't see. Um, There we go. So you've got a simple workflow diagram demonstrated there. And moving down, got a sequence diagram. And if I just go and edit this, you can see this is the mermaid syntax. So it says A goes to B. And if I click on load diagram, It produces that. So A goes to B, A goes to C, so you've got a flow diagram. Um, and you can also create a sequence diagram. And it's similar type of syntax, and you've got a loop going on there. So it's one way out the box now where you can actually put diagrams into your wiki and have the actual <coughs> configuration of that diagram in source control, which is a little bit better than having to do a Visio diagram. Create, copy the image, snapshot it and paste it in. You've got it with your code and also with the rest of the wiki information. Let's try this again. So that was out of the box. So plant UML is a open standard which enables you to create other diagrams, not just um, flowcharts or sequence. So this is an example of a flow, flow chart, but we will go and look at more examples in a minute. The great thing about plant UML is it's extensible. So you've got other people have gone away and created their own versions of Plant UML, which you can use within Plant UML. It's got an extensibility libraries, which you can add to it. So this is an example of the Azure one. So it enables you to put the icons in for Azure. Or if you are an AWS, you can put diagrams together for AWS. Or C4, which is a architectural modeling language. So it's a high level, you've got colored boxes, you've got a nice little legend. So it's a, another approach to do your documentations, diagrams within the wiki, which we'll get onto in a minute. So those um, of you who use Azure DevOps, um, you'd be aware that there is 
this wiki capability, and I've just demonstrated it to you. Um, when I do my wikis, I have them checked in the source control using Git. Um, it enables, there's, there's two ways of doing it. You can use it as an online editor, or you can have it as a Git repository. The benefit of a Git repository is, like I said before, you can actually have your code and your documentation together. So if you're doing a branch, so creating a different version of the source code, you can also update the documentation against that. And when you put it back to master, it's all up to date, all consistent. Because that's the problem sometimes is the documentation is always maybe uh, in front of the code or it may be behind the code. Depends on the way that you work. So Visual Studio Code has a extension which enables you to do plant UML. So let's see if that works. You can see that. No. Okay, so you can see my screen now. So if we just go look at a activity diagram. So we've got an asterisk here, and that's at the start of it. And then we've got the different steps. We've got a nice if else, if else. So as developers, it's quite straightforward for us to sort of understand the syntax for this. Um, and then there's a shortcut, Windows D, and that enables me to generate this diagram. So straight away you can actually work, have it side by side. <coughs> Making changes, refreshing it as you go. So, okay, for an activity diagram, may not be great, but if we look at the component diagram and we're trying to design the new system, here we've got simple UML grouping, got our components, got a database, got a cloud. So these are displayed by just putting in different syntax like a folder, database. So very quickly you can, once you get the hang of the syntax, you can put these diagrams together really quickly. And like the diagram we saw on the microservices, uh, screen. Um, when it comes to putting a diagram together in Visio, which I, I have used a lot in the past, is trying to get those lines looking nice, etc. If I decided to, say like in this example, drop the database, straight away the diagram has reorganized itself. So I'm not having to waste time moving things around. It's, it enables you to be quite productive. So that's a UML example. If we look at the Xero example, one of the differences you notice is here, I'm importing, it's almost like importing a library when you're doing code and saying these are the relevant files which I want to include. And then you can just reference them and say, Give me it as your event hub. This is the, the variable name I'm going to be using. This is one part of the text, and this is the other part of the text. And then that variable name is used when you're actually refer, re referencing the other components. So if I just generate this. There we go. It depends how fast your internet, because it goes off and pulls the libraries in. But there we can see that our event hub is, I can't remember, the raw event hub was the first parameter there, and then description there. And if you want, you can actually go and create your own versions. So for example, um, this is your one. Um, doesn't have, for example, Office 365 icons. So you can, you can take a fork of that, add those in. 
and then you can even add your your own heart's content there and that's what's happened again with the the AWS similar syntax and in this example it comes up we're going to have we've got our diagram we've got the connections so if you look at the syntax this is the this is bit is describing the boxes then this is describing the actual lines between the boxes so I can actually remove the bo the lines regenerate that And there we go, you know, it's reorganised the diagram automatically. Great, but where's the Azure DevOps part of it? So, we have got the syntax, we check it into Git within Azure DevOps. So over here is the <coughs> repository. And these samples I've checked in. And so, there you've got the syntax. So if you wanted, you could edit it in here. You just can't preview it. That's the beauty about using the Visual Studio Code plugin. So I'm actually going to go through and delete these pictures in here. Delete a couple of them. Okay. So if you imagine, I've gone in and I come in here and I change something. So this is another beauty of about I can just come in here and commit that change. So what I've done is configured the build pipelines. So build pipelines is like continuous integration. You can configure certain uh, events, certain tasks to run against your repository. So this repository has got a docs folder. So I've got this automatically triggering whenever anything changes in that docs folder to run this build pipeline. And let's have a quick look at this build pipeline. Whilst it's running. It's quite straightforward. So for those who aren't familiar with Azure DevOps, you specify here is where you specify the repository and you've got some trigger rules up here which we'll go through in a minute. So all I'm doing on this build agent is say install node, install this particular node library which is node plant UML, then run this PowerShell script. And the key thing about this PowerShell script is it's topped and tailed. So the first bit of it is saying, right, get out everything from the source control, check it out. <coughs> this section of the PowerShell script is actually just loop over all the fol folders and the files. And if it's got a PUML, it's the extension, then throw that to the node file. Um, PUML generator here and output the file as a PNG extension. You can do SVG and PDF with this particular command line tool, but Azure DevOps doesn't like um, SVG, which is um, one which I would normally prefer because there's extra capabilities you can use, but it's a class as a security risk, so that's why they don't. And in the trigger here, you can see, um, so I've just got it working against the master branch, and it only works against stuff in the docs, anything changes in that docs folder. So I'm just clicking on, looking to see what's going on with this job. Sorry, this is all down to the speed of the internet on my phone.
Maybe we come back to that. Whilst that's running, I'll show you an example of the ones which I built previously. So here we go. We've got our wiki page now, which is pointing to that folder within the repository. And I've got a nice wiki page with my picture. And all I'm doing there is just referring to the PNG, which has been created and been checked in to the repository. That's the key thing, which maybe I didn't show you on the script, is it checks out, makes the change, then checks in those new pictures that have been generated. Right, that's not working for me. Oh, there we go. It says it's done. So if we just go back and look at the repository and it's the AWS and these your, there we go. We've got our PNG files back there. So it's regenerated them and rechecked them in. And I made a change to one of them, the AWS. And there we go. I changed that to be Google. So made the change, rebuilt the files and published. And that's the talk. Done. Very lightning speed. Okay. <laughs>